Hi everybody. I made quite a few videos uh, on very academic topics uh, for the benefit of uh, persons going for competency exams. It's been uh, quite some time now that I have not made video for uh, selling people on practical marine topics, troubleshooting, breakdowns, etc. So the topic I am going to uh, handle this time is again uh, a very favorite of mine on deck equipments, anchor loss. I already made one uh, quite some time earlier uh, on this topic, but now this is uh, going to deal with the anchor loss, but uh, from a completely different angle, completely different uh, uh, perspective. And uh, small info for all the people who are interested in uh, doing these hydraulic courses, which I conduct for my uh, YouTube subscribers. Uh, you can find the link in the description and then just follow the uh, advice as per that Google form and uh, you can uh, get inducted into that. You are watching Chief Engineer's Tea Time Talk. I am Ramesh and I will be guiding you through this channel. I hope you enjoy this video. It will be quite useful. So have a great time. Let's jump into the video. Thank you so much. I am sure you must have often uh, seen or heard about these type of uh, incidents which uh, resulted in a loss of anchor. Uh, have you ever wondered why? What must have gone wrong? Uh, well, I have already uploaded one video on the same earlier. The cause was wrong adjustment of the support bolt. Uh, you can see the link in the description section. This video is giving you another key aspect uh, which needs to get uh, looked into and uh, often gets neglected. This happened on one of the vessels when I was a superintendent. My vessel almost lost anchor. When something like this is found out, the bigger question is how these type of points find their way into the maritime world of preventive maintenance regimes and inspections. Do these type of findings populate the checklist of class, surveyors, inspectors and superintendents? I am not talking about the learning from incident reports finding the way into the company SMS manual. That's obvious. My question is, is there a mechanism so that if it happens anywhere in any company, the learnings are decimated, the information is passed on and the uh, corrective actions can be incorporated by all ship operators. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe, may not be, I am not in touch. If yes. Uh, please educate me, which is the forum where accidents get discussed by representatives from all the various shipping companies getting together and exchanging some very important information. Okay, anyway, let's come to the issue intended to be discussed here. What you see here is the claw coupling. We also call it as a clutch. This is uh, used to engage and disengage the cable lifter. Here we can see that when the ship is new, the clearance between the pin and the groove is quite small. Uh, when operated, the pin engages the coupling and the full area of the coupling is available to transmit the torque to the pinion. The handle is locked and kept in position with the locking pin which you see here. Right? Okay. Now, when the groove wears out, the clearance between the pin and the groove edges increase. This is very obvious. You can see here. Thereafter, when we engage this lever and use the pin to lock the position, we can see that the coupling has the opportunity to move away that is to the left in this particular drawing because of the clearance. Okay, let's see that happen. So here you saw that, right? Now we can see that the entire area of the coupling is not offered for the torque transmission, not as it was any such. So repeated operation in this condition results in wear and tear of the load bearing surface. This often gets magnified with additional wear and tear of the bush or whatever is there at the pivot point and also by the increase in diameter of the locking holes in the lever and the base plate, maybe a effect of corrosion and uh, repeated use, so many factors. So the final outcome is you often see the coupling having an irregular surface with a possible angle more than 90 degrees. Now we know, when we operate the windlass in this condition, the coupling tends to slip out and then you know what will happen. The chain runs away at breakneck speed. If you are lucky with the brake, you escape. But if you have made a blunder with the support bolt adjustment, you have nobody to blame but yourself. The video on the support bolt adjustment, as I already told you, is already uploaded. Those who have missed can go to the description section and get the link or search it out from the playlist. 
hope you enjoyed this video meet you next time and uh, please do not forget to put in your comments about your thoughts on this particular video see you